distinguished rabbis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for those exceptionally kind and warm words of welcome. It's such an enormous delight for me to see all of you here and uh, to benefit from the vitality and the creativity and the generosity of our incredible Manchester Jewish community. I love my visits to Manchester, but most of all, I love my visits to Heathlands to see what the marvelous Fed does for everybody. And thank you for mentioning the coronation. If there is one particular lesson that emerges for all of us from that experience, and it wasn't me experiencing something in my own capacity, but rather on behalf of all of you, on behalf of all of us, the Jewish communities of the Commonwealth. And if there's one particular lesson that emerges, it's the fact that the more we respect our tradition, the more our society respects us. And in addition to the stay overnight that Valerie and I had in St. James's Palace and the accommodation for our requirements through my participation in the coronation ceremony, there was one experience I had which came as a surprise to me because it hadn't been scripted. As I started to walk on the ceremonial route on that Shabbos morning, the 6th of May, with people 10 to 20 deep on either side, down the mall, and then uh, along Whitehall, people started to cheer. And then it died down, and then again, they started to cheer, clapping, clapping, clapping for a man who was walking. <laughs> and what was it all about? Here and there, there were shouts, Shalom, and Shalom. Here and there, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> And it hit me emotionally because I realized people respect somebody who respects his faith. In order for us to gain acceptance within society, God forbid that we should contemplate assimilating. No. The way we really attain respect is by respecting our tradition. And that will always stay with me. And you know, Part of the respect for our tradition is the respect for the mitzvah to give to tzedakah, the mitzvah of kimilut chasadim, the mitzvah of volunteering, of being there for the sake of others. It's one of the hallmarks of our Jewish tradition and our Jewish faith. And from all of my experiences, society out there respects us enormously. They envy us because they know that it comes from the heart. You know, the Hebrew word for thanks is modeh. But Mode has another meaning. If you look in the Mishnah, Mode means to admit. So what's the connection between saying thank you and admitting? Well, you see, if you are really thankful, you have to admit that if not for that other person, it wouldn't have been possible. That's, by the way, the reason why some people find it difficult to say thank you. Because they're not willing to admit, to acknowledge that they needed the help of somebody else. But in reality, we are giving thanks to all of you tonight because we admit, we acknowledge, if not for you, the Fed couldn't do it, works pro it work properly. If not for you, people couldn't function properly in their lives. And that's an enormous contribution from the heart that you are giving within our true Jewish religious experience. Now, there is a palindrome in the Torah, it's the longest of all palindromes, it's the word vinatnu, and they shall give, vavnu, tafnu, vav, it's the same forwards and backwards, indicating that when you give, you receive in turn. The finest way to attain fulfillment and satisfaction and gratification in life is through knowing that we exist in order to enrich the lives of others, in order to assist them. And I don't have to tell you that, that's the story of your lives. That is what you experience all the time. And the best part of it all is that's not the reason why you do it. It's just a consequence of your actions. The reason why you do it is for altruistic reasons. You're there for the sake of others. As the Torah says, Kol venu libo. When people volunteer from their hearts, it is the finest possible act. Now I want to share with you a story that happened at the beginning of the 20th century, at the time when there were pioneers in the land of Israel, not yet called Israel. And there was a man and his wife and their many children, and they just couldn't properly earn a living. And in desperation, the couple decided 
that the husband would go to America and there he would work hard, raise a lot of money, bring it back for the family. And that's exactly what he did. He sailed to America. And after half a year, he had already amassed $100, which was quite a sizable sum in those days. And he still wanted to carry on working. So he wanted somebody who would be sailing to Israel to take the money for him to his family. So he put an advert in a paper saying, I'm looking for somebody who's going to be sailing to the Holy Land. And somebody came to him and he said, yes, in two weeks' time, I'll be on a ship. I'll be going to the Holy Land. What do you want me to do? And he said, I want to give you an envelope, some money for my family. And the man said, well, how much will it be? He said, well, $100. I'd like you please to take this to my family. And then the man said, and what will my reward be? So the fellow said, take the money to my family and please give them what you want. Wow. He said, really? He said, yeah, give them what you want. He said, can I come back tomorrow with a lawyer? Sure. So the following day he came with a lawyer. They drew up a document and that's what was in the document. On the day that he was to sail, he pitched up to receive the envelope. The man said, so have you decided what you're doing with the money? He said, yes. I'm going to be taking $95 for myself and I'm going to be giving your family $5. So the fellow said, okay, I'm going to send a letter to my wife to let her know she should expect $95 from you. He said, no, 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 you've got it wrong. It's the other way around. He said, no, you will be giving my wife $95. So the fellow took the contract out of his pocket. He said, yes, have a look at that contract. You promised that you would give my family what you want. Now you want $95. You have to give my family what you want. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the privilege right now to be in the presence of people who give others what they want. What we would want is, if we were elderly, we'd like people to assist us. If we were frail, we'd like people to be there to hold our hand. If we needed medical attention, we would want the very best. If we wanted any need of assistance from others, we would like others to be there for us. You are the experts in giving people what you would want. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I acknowledge, I admit, that you are amongst the finest people we have within British Jury, and that's why I'm here this evening. Because you're incredible. Thank you so much to the most marvelous, wonderful pair. Thank you so much to all of you. And please don't thank me for coming specially here. I'm the one who's inspired by you all. God bless.